Rethinking Juvenile Justice, Promoting the Health and Well-Being of Crossover Youth, Sierra Health Foundation's Positive Youth Justice Initiative. Over the past decade, Sierra Health Foundation has invested in community efforts to improve the health and well-being of youth. The Foundation's Reach Youth Development Initiative prompted the release of two Foundation Commission reports, Healthy Youth, Healthy Regions, and Renewing Juvenile Justice. Using research and lessons learned, Sierra Health Foundation and their partners, the California Endowment and the California Wellness Foundation, have joined together to implement the Positive Youth Justice Initiative. Prevention specialists and other individuals working with extremely high-risk populations will be interested in how the Sierra Health Foundation utilize the guidelines and many of the strategies outlined in strategic prevention framework in their processes for developing the Positive Youth Justice Initiative. As research linking childhood and youth experiences to adult health status has evolved, two subpopulations, youth in child welfare and youth in juvenile justice systems, have become the focus of policy and practice reform. However, there is a third, perhaps more vulnerable group, youth with histories in both the child welfare and juvenile justice systems crossover youth. Membership in this group is a strong and consistent predictor of poor adult outcomes. Heavy use of public services, including extremely high use of mental health services, lower educational attainment, and high likelihood of criminal justice involvement. Uh, Positive Youth Justice Initiative is really looking at county level juvenile justice systems, the way they operate. Their traditional frame is not to be uh, promoting youth well-being, but as uh, someone that works for a health foundation, that's what we're about, is making sure that uh, young people who are most at risk for health, poor health outcomes have the opportunity to, uh, to live a healthy and productive life. So Positive Youth Justice came about by blending our previous youth program, which was really about building youth development supports at the community level, um, with the direct uh, investment into the highest risk youth population. For us, that's crossover youth, youth who have been in the child welfare system but are now in the juvenile justice system. So we, we're taking that learned experience from a previous uh, youth initiative and blending it with this new initiative which is uh, really focused on the highest risk youth populations. It's something that we knew we missed in our last youth program, the REACH youth program. Uh, it was a general youth development approach which brought lots of young people to the table but not those that are most at risk for the poor health outcomes and we took a learning approach to it that said if we need to reach those high-risk youth populations that are likely to live you know poor health uh, you know in their communities uh, we need to be intentional about uh, engaging those young people. Substance use is a factor in at least 80 percent of all California foster care placements and foster youth exhibit higher rates of illegal drug use than youth who have never been in foster care. Numerous studies show that approximately 50% of all children and youth in the foster care system have mental health problems. Children and youth experiencing numerous placements are also effective emotionally, cognitively, and physically contributing to both the internalizing and externalizing of negative behavior and increasing their risk for and rates of substance use and violence. 
Given the numerous risk factors faced by crossover youth, they more often than not fall into the selective or indicated spectrum of the Institute of Medicine Model of Prevention, requiring interventions that are tailored to address their specific risk factors, such as family, community dysfunction, high rates of substance use, undiagnosed or misdiagnosed mental health disorders, physical abuse, and trauma. Developing the initiative was a year-long process, merging lessons learned from SHS previous investments in youth development. The initiative was also timely, coming directly on the heels of the state's decision to diminish their role and realign juvenile justice back to the counties. This presented a huge opportunity to participate in and influence juvenile justice policy and practice throughout the state. The initiative is designed to support the planning and implementation of county level strategies to support juvenile justice system redesign and produce better outcomes for crossover youth. We designed a strategy, the Positive Youth Justice Initiative, which blends positive youth development with trauma-informed care, um, delivering those supports uh, through wraparound service provision culturally competent uh, supports in the community um, with community-based organizations uh, and then also looking at the way juvenile justice systems operate so looking at the data that they use or don't use uh, the tools that they use to assess and treat and support young people and then also looking at maybe some of the systemic biases that we see for youth of color uh, whether they're getting access to mental health services or they're getting uh, you know, access to those key supports that we know will improve outcomes in the long term. The process followed many of the steps and activities outlined in the Strategic Prevention Framework. One, each eligible county was assessed for their local readiness to embrace reform. Was there a strong leadership team in place? Were they already involved with other youth development and ATOD prevention initiatives? The Positive Youth Justice Initiative evaluated the capacity of county level systems to address the challenges associated with juvenile justice realignment. What types of data are they collecting? What is their track record for working with youth? For example, do they try them as adults? What is the juvenile arrest incarceration rate? Are there disproportionate minority confinement issues? And what is their capacity to diagnose and treat youth for AOD and MH disorders? Baseline training was provided and selected counties needed to identify in their plans how they would further build their capacity in areas where they were not as strong. Three. A detailed planning process was facilitated with community stakeholders in each county, including schools, prevention experts, community-based programs, and other foundations to determine who was or was not at the table. What were their top priorities, needs for serving youth in their specific county? How could the community consortium be meaningfully involved and what could feasibly be accomplished in the two years of implementation funding. Four, core components of effective implementation were identified, ensuring a strong fit between the planning process and the evidence-based practices appropriate for each county, including training specific to selective evidence-based practices, building the implementation around the four design elements of the Positive Youth Justice Initiative, positive youth development, trauma-informed care, wraparound services, and improved operational capacity, and building all implementation using an integrated service delivery model. Five, tools, processes, 
and procedures were put in place to effectively evaluate the outcomes of each program. Each evaluation plan is tailored to the unique local efforts and each county was required to develop an evaluation team tasked with monitoring outcomes for the specific initiatives. Sierra Health Foundation plans to issue an evaluation report that synthesizes the findings and lessons learned from the overall project. As continuous replication of this project is a Sierra Health Foundation goal. With the PYJI supporting counties in the process of redesigning their local juvenile justice systems, numerous prevention protective factors will be strengthened and it is predicted that many of these extremely high risk youths will experience improved resiliency and outcomes in all areas of health and well-being as well as education, employment, all things that affect prevention related outcomes. The objectives of the PYJI were developed using the collaborative process outlined in the Strategic Prevention Framework, where the following elements were reoccurring themes in the planning process. Once they're engaged in the juvenile justice system, we know these youth development supports can help influence uh, their path to a healthy, um, productive life. We know all young people need those supports. and. What's important is these juvenile ju the youth that are in the juvenile justice system now have an opportunity through Positive Youth Justice Initiative to, uh, to have access to those critical supports which promote youth health and well-being. So with Positive Youth Justice Initiative, it's really about blending those youth development supports around improving educational outcomes, making sure that young people who are in the juvenile justice system have more access to the workforce and you know, workforce preparedness. Um, that health piece is so important. We know that young people who are in the juvenile justice system might be struggling with addiction or uh, other issues that may affect their, their health outcomes, mental health challenges. So those supports will be critical to ensuring that young people have an opportunity to right their path. Many of our most traumatized youth are found in the juvenile justice system. Studies show that up to 70% of California's juvenile justice population has some form of mental health disorder. These special needs youth often have extensive histories of system involvement, beginning with the child welfare system. 93% of all girls involved in the juvenile justice system have experienced sexual and or physical abuse. Many of these trauma related needs can be identified and addressed by incorporating the upfront use of comprehensive assessment tools and then building upon youth resiliency and protective factors through continuous access to prevention messages and the use of evidence-based programming such as Stephanie Covington's Voices a program of self-discovery and empowerment for girls. Wraparound services as defined for the PYJI are an intensive, individualized care planning and management process that is more holistic in nature than traditional care plans. Taking into consideration the multiple systems in which the youth and family are involved and wrapping them with a full set of services and community support. In addition to the development of problem solving and coping skills, there is an emphasis on integrating youth into the community and building their social support network using a strength-based approach. Another piece for us is, that's critical is the cross-system collaboration. We've heard as we've visited communities that public systems may have collaborated in the past, uh, but we want a more intentional design in that collaboration and the inclusion 
and actually um, intentional invitation to community-based organizations that are working in the neighborhoods where these young people are coming from. Those faces, those individuals, those adult supports will be there long after those systems are out of their life. So how do we help promote those healthy relationships with those partners in the community? That's another critical piece for Positive Youth Justice Initiative. Improve operational capacity. You know, many good ideas have failed due to poor implementation. The Positive Youth Justice Initiative will support buildings, the infrastructure capacity of the counties engaged in the project too. One, design and implement uniform data collection and reporting systems. Two, develop and implement validated screening and assessment tools to more accurately identify youth developmental service needs including those for access to AOD prevention messages, and three, promote institutional and system changes that address disproportionate rates of minority contact and support the building of health, wellness, supportive, and inclusive relationships with youth, their families, and communities. Initial positive youth justice grantees are Alameda, Sacramento, San Diego, San Joaquin, and Yolo County Probation Departments, and the Vallejo City Unified School District in Solano County. We've seen model programs across the country that take not only the cross-system collaboration, but community-based support. So making sure that those non-traditional partners are at the table. Uh, we know at day one they may not be at the table. Uh, they may not be familiar with the jargon and the, the juvenile justice system conversations and the vocabulary, but they're important to be at the table. They'll be there because uh, their focus, the folks that we're thinking of, the, the neighborhood organizations, the, the caring adults, the faith-based groups that are working within the communities, they're there to advocate for the well-being of young people and they are a critical partner in the systems reform that we see at the county level. Their ideas, their advocacy, and their thoughts and leadership will really not only help systems if they're engaged early, but then help sustain whatever systems changes we see through the initiative. We see their voices as critical partners and like I said, the, the space may not be there at the table right now on day one, but we have an expectation that uh, in the next six to eight months, we are gonna see county systems create that space for those not maybe non-traditional partners and, and then include them in the dialogue of that system reform. The Community Partnership for Families of San Joaquin engage crossover youth directly in the Positive Youth Justice Initiative where they share their observations, attitudes, perspectives, and feelings regarding juvenile justice issues and related social, emotional, and health issues through a variety of activities and formats, including leadership training, spoken word, art, and focus groups. Recommendations from youth participants included access to mental health services in non-threatening locations, more opportunities for participating in extracurricular activities, sports, and mentoring programs, more affordable or no-cost transportation options or activities close to home, running teen empowerment meetings in juvenile hall to improve the relationships between youth and probation officers, and providing gender responsive care, in particular regarding resources around teen pregnancy. Vallejo Unified School District is the only non-county entity to win funding under the SHF Positive Youth Justice Initiative. They will be working with the Solano County Probation Department to develop local programming, including a full service community school to deter crossover youth from becoming repeat offenders and potential dropouts. 
it was quite unique to see a school district as the applicant, but also very innovative. One of the strengths would be the natural approach of an educational system to support students and families. Matt Cervantes, SHF Senior Program Officer. You know, and one thing that we're really trying to do is model what we're promoting, you know, at the community level. So within the Positive Youth Justice Initiative, it's the Sierra Health Foundation's um, initiative, but we're partnering with the California Endowment and the California Wellness Foundation in, in helping support communities implement the Positive Youth Justice Initiative. Philanthropy has to walk the, the talk, and, uh, and we're trying to do that within this initiative as well.